People receive the Lord by grace. They sing, just as I am without one plea. But then as soon as they get born again, they think, now I got to study the word, pray, do this, this, and this before God will bless me. That's not walking by the same rule. That's not the same way that you received Christ. If you would have had to have been holy in order to get saved, none of us would have ever been saved. It was by grace we were saved, through faith. But then somehow people get into works once they get saved. Now they love the Lord and they try and earn God's blessing. That's completely contrary to this verse. Verse 7 says, Rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Man, every one of these verses I've taught on for hours at a time. But you abound in faith with thanksgiving. If you aren't thanking God, if you aren't a thankful person, you know, it says Philippians, it says, let with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. If you aren't abounding in thanksgiving, you aren't abounding in faith. Amen. That's a big statement. There's a lot of people that faith to them is, man, they get in the trench, they're just crying out, screaming, oh God, and they're fighting and doing all of this. And there's no joy. I mean, a lot of people who call themselves intercessors and yet they're just depressed and discouraged. And I mean, man, there's no joy whatsoever. In the New Testament, we're supposed to let our requests be made known with thanksgiving. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, Nehemiah chapter eight, verse 10. And on and on, you abound in faith with thanksgiving. No thanksgiving, you aren't abounding in faith. And then here's verse eight. This is where I was wanting to get to. And it says, beware. Did you know the word beware is a military term to be on guard. And it actually comes from a re root word of be at war is what it means. Beware, be on guard. You're in a battle. And if you think, well, I'm not in a battle, it doesn't mean that you aren't in a battle. It just means you're going to lose because you aren't beware. <laughs> you aren't at war. You are at war. Satan is coming against you. He's trying to steal the word. He'll try and get you offended. He'll try and get you to focus on things that aren't significant. You need to be on guard and be at, um, be at war. Recognize this. And it says, beware lest any man spoil you. And the word spoil here is not talking about spoil like fruit spoils or meat spoils. This is talking about beware, be on guard, lest any man spoil you. You go and defeat your enemy and then you take the spoils. You strip them of everything they've got that's of value. And that's the way that it was done in war. You would go and just take all of the spoils of war. So this is talking about beware, lest Satan strip you of the awesome things that God has given every one of us. Beware lest any man spoil you. And here's how it happens. Through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So we are at war and we have to be on guard and recognize that the way that Satan is coming against us is through philosophy. Through the traditions of man, through the rudiments of this world. And see, a lot of people aren't aware of this. This is really important. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, the scripture there says, No weapon formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, thus saith the Lord. Notice in the first part of that verse, No weapon formed against you will prosper. And then it says, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment. If you really study this out, words are weapons. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Words are powerful. And it says that death and life, it didn't say death and life and a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't mean anything. Every word that you hear is either ministering life or it's ministering death. There are no neutral words. And this is not only true of the words that come out of your mouth. This is every word that you hear. Every word that you hear is either ministering life or it's ministering death. Did you know every song that you sing, the words to it are either ministering life or death. And you know, sometimes it's obvious if it's not Christian music and they're talking about killing cops and 
doing things like this, that that stuff's death and you don't need to be listening to that. But I tell you, Christian music, so-called Christian music will kill you. It's terrible. They're singing about, you know, how bad their life is and oh, oh God, are you there? And it's unbelief. And it's just spewing out all of this doubt and all of their hurt and all of their unbelief. And that's not right. Those words will kill you. You need to beware, you need to be on guard. You can sing a lot of Christian music and you may like the, the, lyri uh, the, the melody, but the lyrics will kill you. You know, I hadn't listened to music in a long, long time, so any examples I use are old, okay? <laughs> but uh, I remember a long time ago, there was this song, One Day at a Time, Sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. And the lyrics go, Lord, you know, if you're looking below, it's worse now than then. What a dumb song. <laughs> if he's looking below. You know what? That's speaking unbelief. It's words that will damage you. It'll make you think that God is disconnected and he's not paying attention. And then there's a phrase in that song that says, uh, uh, I'm only human. I'm just a man. By you speaking that, you're speaking death. You aren't only human. You aren't just a man. One third of you is wall to wall Holy Ghost. And I don't deny that I have a part of me that's physical and flesh and that hurts sometimes and has things happen, but I do deny that that's all there is to me. And I don't approach God from my flesh and say, oh God, I'm just defeated and depressed. Oh God, help me. The moment you do that, you are out of the spirit and you're in the flesh. You are, you are approaching God in the flesh. And the Bible says in John 4, 24, they that worship God must worship him in spirit. And in truth, your spirit is never depressed. Your spirit is never discouraged. Your spirit is never hurt.